I recognize the member from Memram Cook, um, Tantabar. Walalan, Madam Speaker. It is an honour to rise in the House today to speak to Bill 55, an act to amend the Education Act. It's important that we recognize the land that we live on. So back home, in my riding of Memram Cook Tantramar, I live in Mi'kma'ki, so that's the unceded territory of the, the Mi'kmaq people, and I live near Umlumgug, which is in English known as Fort Folly First Nation. And today, here, we are gathered on the, the Wolustuk territory, which is covered by the trees, well, all of this territory here, is covered by the trees of peace and friendship, which the Wolustuk, Mi'kmaq, and Passamaquoddy peoples first signed with the British Crown in 1725. The treaties did not deal with surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized Wolustuk, Mi'kmaq, and Passamaquoddy title and established the rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. And I want to respectfully recognize and acknowledge those treaties and the fact that we are meeting here today on the unsurrendered and unceded traditional lands of the Wolustuk. As, as I think at, at this point, uh, my colleagues understand the actual bill proposed today is quite simple. It adds the word language to the Education Act, and that one word, language, has a lot of significance. The line in, uh, would now read in the Education Act that the minister shall prescribe or approve programs and services which foster an understanding of Aboriginal history, language, and culture among all pupils. In 2017, the member for Fredericton South passed a bill with all party support to ensure that Indigenous history and culture is part of our school curriculum. This was one step. Today we have the opportunity to take another step. And the next logical step is enshrining in law that Indigenous languages would be included in the provincial curriculum for public school students. This is very important. As I, I believe the other members of the House understand, the New Brunswick public school system was used to assimilate Wabanaki students. Their ancestral languages were attacked, and they were not allowed to speak their languages in this, these schools, in the schools, let alone in the residential and Indian Day schools. We have an opportunity for public schools to now be used to revitalize Wabanaki languages, which are fundamental to culture, to identity, to the First Nations of this province. As I've said, this is a small step toward recognizing the value of Wabadaki languages, the languages of the Mi'kmaq, Wolastikwe, and Pasamaquoddy people. And I want to share some words that were graciously taught to me. Pajitsput Wolastikwe, Ladawawagan, which means our Wolastikwe language is sacred, and Olnu Weasel Dinech, Olnu Ginamau Dinech. That means, let's all learn Mi'kmaq, let's all learn in Mi'kmaq. I want to thank those who taught me these words, and I want to thank those who have carried their languages forward, despite the odds, through many difficulties, through systematic attacks on their languages, but they've carried them forward, they're still here today, and this bill can help to, to ensure that they are preserved and not just that, um, that they, they can flourish in our province. I also want to thank those members of the House who have said they'll support this bill and call on all members of the House to work together to get Bill 55 passed through today, past second reading, onto committee and then ultimately passed into law. As many have said, this is a small step that we can take together. This is a small step towards reconciliation and dismantling racism and colonialism. Walalin, Madam Speaker, Wuliwan. Plaît-il à la Chambre que le projet de loi 55 soit maintenant lu une deuxième fois? Les députés qui appuient la motion voudront bien dire oui. Les députés qui s'y opposent voudront bien dire non. À mon avis, les oui l'emportent. Conformément à l'article 42.1 du règlement, le projet de loi 55 sera référé au comité de la politique économique.